Welcome to the Maxwell Leadership Executive Podcast, where our goal is to help you increase your reputation as a leader, increase your ability to influence others, and increase your ability to fully engage your team to deliver remarkable results. Hi, I'm Perry Holly, a Maxwell Leadership Facilitator and Coach. And I'm Chris Cody, Executive Vice President with Maxwell Leadership. Welcome and thank you for joining. Just as we get started, I want to let you know that um, if you are interested in Perry, myself, one of our executive facilitators, especially Perry, especially Perry, <laughs> coaches helping your team, your organization with your culture, with your leadership, with developing people, that's what we do. Matter of fact, a lot of stuff uh, that we talk about here today comes directly from the field. Almost all. And yeah. we are helping people and organizations around the world with their leadership culture. What is it? You know, what does that look like? What does it feel like to work inside your organization? If that is you, and, and, and if we can help your team, I want to encourage you to go to maxwellleadership.com slash podcast there. You can fill out a form. You can also leave a question or a comment for Perry and I, and we'll respond to that on one of our upcoming episodes. Well, today's topic, as I just mentioned, I know, Perry, just by this topic right here, is coming directly from the field. Mm -hmm. And um, the topic we're going to talk about today is, am I really responsible for your self-concept um no i'm not no <laughs> so is this this is a challenge that some leaders are having Talk well, to us i'll just, tell, I'll just tell you a coaching client uh actually called me with a question i thought it was a good one she said that there are people on her team that she noticed don't take the initiative and they uh, they always wait for her to make the decision or to mm. um describe the work or define the work they they don't really look out and see what needs to be done. And she was perplexed by this. There are others that do, but she had a couple that just were, they were good performers overall, but they didn't take initiative. And uh, she wanted to know what she could do about that. And that, I got to thinking on it. So the, you know, the question I, you know, what, what do you think is going on here and what should a leader do when people on the team don't take initiative? Well, I don't know this leader. I don't know her as well as, as you do. Um, but when I hear you say that, there's two things that come to mind. Number one, she she probably doesn't ask any questions. Could be. Yeah. This is just thoughts. Is it is it because of the way that she has a pattern of providing the answers for mm. every situation okay. um, and not asking questions? The second thing that came to mind was, do the people on the team believe that they can actually do the work, right? Like, do they believe that they have what it takes to be successful? Those are the two things that I came to now. You know her a lot better than yeah, I do. I think so. it's very good. I, I, actually, I, my my brain went to the same place. I was, um, you know, let's take your first question that you asked first was, um, and we've talked about this on the podcast before, uh, about leaders who display behaviors that diminish capabilities mm. of their workers. And this uh, obviously comes straight from our friend Liz Wiseman and the, the study she did on multipliers. And uh, I just was fascinated by that, that there are, things we do that can either multiply the capabilities of our people or we can do things that diminish the capabilities of our people. And do you remember some of these, these I do. diminishing behaviors? Yeah, do yeah you? I do. As a leader, right, this is what we're talking about. As a leader, you have these behaviors that will diminish the um, the people on your team. And um, why I remember this is funny. <laughs> Liz actually came and spoke yeah. uh, for one of our events, several of our events. Yes. She and John um, have a relationship. And I remember right after she spoke, uh, John got our team together and said, okay, now which, which, yeah. which one of these, <laughs> yeah, like, I'm going to go through and think about these. And I remember Linda Egger is his longtime executive assistant and partner in all of our businesses. She was just like, oh no, we don't need to think about that. Like, I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to tell you what they're at <laughs> right now, Get John, here they are. Here we go. <laughs> and so I, I do, it's, 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 uh, it's a fascinating concept. And so I do the two that stick out to me would be, um, one was the rescuer mm, That's me. and, and you and I are wired mm -hmm. very similar. Yeah. Right. And so we don't want to see people struggle even though as they struggle it's the greatest learning environment yeah. uh, that they can be a part of you and i would agree with that we we've learned some of our greatest lessons from from some of our struggles but we want to jump in and rescue them and there's not we don't leave room for growth in that the other one is the protector and this is where you are you, guilty uh, yeah yeah guilty <laughs> you, you you know you are shielding your people from really what's going on and um and you're doing a disservice you're diminishing the opportunity for for them to grow, and so both of these cases, um, we need to we need to make sure that we're not doing this, and that we're looking at the multiplying their capabilities, not necessarily diminishing that. Yeah, and I their... wish that we could stop there, but I was also looking at the list, and I because I was guilty on both of those, but also they have one called the rapid responder, 
oh man, I was guilty of this. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, a request would come in from a client. It would only it would send it to the rep or to the technical person and copy me, but I would see the opportunity to jump in and, and would rapidly respond. And I didn't realize I was training my whole team to say, just wait, Barry will handle it. Yeah. Uh, and then they, they took no action. I just diminished their behavior. Another one that described me was the optimist. Again, a, a positive can-do leader that uh, who thinks and my belief in people that I believe you can do so much that will inspire you to do even more. Uh, unfortunately, that it uh, I usually wear people down by pushing them into too many things mm. they, they shouldn't be doing. So, um, you know, one thing that I was really encouraged about, and Liz probably probably wasn't, but she had to re-release the book because it, it used to say that you're a diminisher. And then they had to change the title after she went back and looked at the research. It's, it was called an accidental diminisher. And they had to re-release the entire book because of that change in wording. Mm. They said that almost every leader has the best intentions. They, sure. The ones you described, sure. wanting to be protecting or yeah. helping or being optimistic or being a, helping and responding. Those are all done with good motive. They're just not good for the team. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, I, I love that. I didn't know that. And um, that, that's good to know. But we really got to pay attention to these as leaders. This is real. Uh, as Perry and I just kind of quickly shared how, you know, the two that came to our mind that we, we deal with. And so this is something that we've got to be aware of. Hey, podcast listeners. Do you have a clear plan for growth? Achieving big results most often does not require big life changes. Small improvements over time compound into big results. Download Clear by Maxwell Leadership. It's the new free app where our expert guides help you pace your leadership journey and set a clear plan for your growth. You can also find all sorts of resources on the Clear app, including this podcast and information on upcoming events such as our International Maxwell Conference this August. This upcoming conference will be like no other, so be sure to download Clear by Maxwell Leadership in your app store and register today. What about my second thought there, my second question? Um, do the people on the team believe they can do the work? Do, do they believe they have what it takes to be successful? Yeah, and that's really the question that generated the title for the podcast is, am I you know, responsible for your self-concept? And uh, I think it's another challenge that leaders face uh, with how people on your team see themselves. Now, this is, you start thinking, really? And that's what some, this leader said, really? I'm responsible for how they see themselves? And no, not really, but it's it, the self-concept, if you look at it, is described many ways, but it's your self-image, uh, your self-esteem, uh, your self-belief. Uh, these are all things about how you see you. And mm. it's not unusual uh, this day and time to find people that um, think they don't have what it takes, uh, that they that they can't do the job up to your expectations, or that they uh, they're talking to themselves in a way that says I'm not good enough, I, I I'm dropping the ball. That they they run themselves down a bit, and it it really is a great place. You're not responsible for somebody else's self concept, right. but if I told you you could affect their performance by positively speaking toward that self-concept. Wouldn't you want to do that? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I also see this as um, just a lack of self-confidence in, in, in certain things that people do. And mm -hmm. listen, leaders, when you have people that are on your team, you get that whole person. Yeah. That means that you get the baggage that comes with it. We all have it. Right. And, and I know that, some of our team members have different levels of, of, of confidence in themselves in different areas. And one of the ways I see this show up in lack of self-confidence is, man, they just, they're asking excessive instructions and or questions um, of how to do something or what does this look like? And you know that there's more in there, but they're just continuing, continuing to ask these questions. And I think that um, that shows one way they have lack of self-confidence, la they lack self-confidence. They, they may check in with you a little more frequently than you want them to on their progress. They may need a little extra reassurance. They may even need your approval. I, mm. I, I have um, certain situations of people that I've led over time where there are little things along the way that they just want to hear, yes, that's the right check. Yes, that's the right. Yes, you're headed in the right direction. Even though deep down inside they know, and I've challenged them on that, they still come back because of 
Maybe this lack of self confidence. I, really, I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> You're talking about me, right? That's no. right. That's right. <laughs> so the question I guess we should answer is: uh, How would one positively affect another person's self concept? Yeah. And if this may sound uh, very basic, but I thought, can you express your personal belief in them? And I'm flashing back to last week's uh, podcast. We mm. talked about: Do you believe in someone's potential? Can you see potential in them? Uh, and I. I had my own reflection of my own growth through this was, and you and I were talking before the uh, microphones came on earlier about my self-concept. Uh, I realized I struggled with that because uh, the way I was raised, and I'm the oldest uh, and mm. my, my dad's firstborn son. And I was being, I was pushed pretty heavily into sports and other things. I'm big. And so I was, I was expected to do things and he did it with the best intentions. He wanted the very best for me, but he, he, always left me thinking I needed more. I, I, I didn't, I wasn't good enough. I needed to, I didn't have what it takes was the term I came out of that with. And so I noticed with my own kids that I realized my dad had the best intentions, but I came, came out of it thinking I was lacking and I didn't have that real strong self-belief. So now when I look at my team or I, even my team at home and my team at the office was I've adopted this terminology that you have what it takes. It's going to be hard. You're going to get knocked down. There are going to be challenges. You have what it takes. Yeah. It's, you're, it's going to be uphill. You're going to make some mistakes, but you have what it takes. Uh, you're, you're going to struggle. There's, there are going to be days when you lose, but you have what it takes. Yeah. So let's, And they just give people that I believe in you, and so I'm looking for you to believe in you. And I think a lot of people, If uh, yeah, I think you said it last week, uh, if, if, if people believe in you, that, oh. that was what a lot of people say, yeah, that's what got me going that's, that's it. to do that. Yeah. This is why Perry and I and our team, this is why we do this podcast right here. This may seem like a simple principle, right? <laughs> I was almost embarrassed to bring it. And go, this yeah, is gonna... <laughs> it, it, it seems simple, but here's the deal, right? Every single one of us that are leading a team, leading a department, leading an organization, leading a family, whatever it might be, you have to understand this. You have to know this because it is real and it is very relevant to influencing and leading people. We don't know the story that people are coming mm, to your so team true. with telling them themselves. Like right. we don't know that story, right. you know, and there's a great, there's a great video um, that Chick-fil-A did years and years ago. It was a training video that says everybody has a story. Mm -hmm. And what's awesome about that video is that it just goes around one of their locations and it just shows every individual within about an hour span of time and then puts a little caption above it. No one's talking but it's telling you their story and it right. just says, Hey, everybody's got a story if you're willing to just ask it. And so I think that we need to understand that, that people are bringing and telling themselves a story. We got to let them know back to that word belief that you just talked about, that we believe in them, that we value them, that we unconditionally love them. Now that's a soft word. We, Perry and I've done some talks mm -hmm. on this in the past and uh, Joel Mamby, who's part of our team does some great work too about the word love and what that it's actually an action and a verb, but we have to unconditionally love our people. And we, they need to know that they feel um, needed as part of our team. They need to feel relevant. Now we're saying all this and we're not saying we don't hold them accountable, that we don't hold them to high expectations um, that they, that, that we don't challenge them. I think that's a really great point. <laughs> I, well, I think, I think yeah. any leader that we've had that, led and handled the first part of my conversation here just a minute ago um, was a was a really, really good leader in our life. But if they can do that and push you and have high expectations and want to challenge them, that makes them a great leader in, in your life. And here's my last thing we before I throw it back to you. We say all the time, we need to lead people the way they need to be led. Right, right. For this reason specifically, it's so important. You can't lead everybody the same. That is so good. Uh, so good. I, I'm thinking about, you know, the opposite of, you mentioned the word self-confidence and it's some people lack that self-confidence, but I've, I've also learned kind of what the opposite of that is. There's a little self-sabotage going mm -hmm. on yeah. and, yeah. and how we talk to ourselves. And that's probably a, enough for another podcast on uh, how do you do positive self-talk, but you, you don't know, like you said, what somebody's telling themselves. So um, I, I've just been, I was just telling a young man that I'm working with that you got to maybe Quit talking to yourself. Quit listening to yourself and start talking to yourself. Oh, that's good. And so that's I'm listening so to these internal voices, but can I start talking to myself in positive terms? And as a leader, that's really our gift to them is to, we mentioned last week, I think, putting a tent on their head, seeing them in a positive light, knowing that they, we're going to develop you. We're going to equip you. We're going to challenge you. There are going to be up, it's going to be uphill. Yeah. 
However, I believe in you and you have what it takes. And let's, we're, we're going to give you the resources and things you need, but, I, but I'm encouraging people to step up and fulfill that, that potential, that capacity that we talked about last week by us helping them with their self-concept and how they see themselves. Listen, as I wrap up here, here here's what this message is all about. We believe that um, we want to help leaders create powerful, positive change and that everybody deserves to be led well everybody on your team. And so one of the things that as leaders, you need to be aware of that um, you need to communicate to your team. It's not, in, it's not, it's not that it's not important. It's very important to see ourselves as we are, right? That's awareness. We've talked a lot about that, but don't just stay there. It's a starting point. It's the foundation. Mm -hmm. And what we've got to do for ourselves as leaders, as well as those that are on our team, we got to, we got to step back and say, what, what, what could we be? What is our, what our real selves? What's the, what's the potential back to last week's lesson and then grow into that and understand that, um, we have the ability to write a different story, oh, right. you know, as we continue to, to grow and to change that self concept that we may be, that we may have. And then the story that we're telling about ourselves. And so we control that. We, we control that narrative. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, thank you, Chris. And just a reminder, if you'd like to learn more about our offerings or uh, download the learner guide for this episode, perhaps leave a question or a comment. We always love hearing from you. You can do that at maxwellleadership.com slash podcast. We're always grateful that you would spend this time with us. That's all today from the Maxwell Leadership Executive Podcast. <laughs>